so yeah, so it's a big time for you because you were nominated for a song. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, you and your band, you broke up, you came back, you wrote a new album. Tell me about this new album and the song that you were nominated for. I didn't think we'd ever make music again. You know, like we've been going for like 10 years. This we like high school kids, basically, right after high school. A lot of people grow, a lot of people change. You know, it's, it's hard to stay on the same page when you start to become a man. I feel like, you know, when you're on the road, maybe you're a little bit of a late bloomer. Like things that people might have gone through in college, it kind of hit us a little bit later because just kind of stay forever young on tour. And has some of us got married, some of the dudes got married and had kids and just life happens. We just, it, things started to change and it felt like we didn't enjoy what we we're doing anymore. So we went separate ways and said we'd never play again. It kind of got to the point at the end where we kind of hated each other, you know, which is sad because it's like, these are like my brothers, you yeah. know, like it, they're not blood, but it might as well be spent so much time with them, you know? Uh, so, you know, we had this 10 year anniversary coming up on Define the Great Line, which was came out in 2006. So in 2016, right before then, we started talking about maybe playing a show, which led into conversations of a tour, which we did a reunion tour. And on that tour, me and Aaron, our drummer, we started talking about like, this is stupid that we don't, why aren't we doing this? You know, this, this, this is what we do. It's in your blood. Yeah, this is like, we're good at this, this is what we're meant to do, we're having fun. Like, everyone seems to have grown up a lot, you know, during that, during that breakup or whatever. So long story short, me and Aaron started writing and then uh, waited for the rest of the band to be like, all right, let's make a record. I'm like, good, because we already got about 10 songs. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it, it, it's uh, my favorite piece of music we've ever made, the whole album is itself, because while, while we were writing it and recording it, even though we agreed to do it, I didn't know if it was gonna come out or, there's a squirrel back yeah, there. Yeah, there's a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, like, I was making a record like, this could be my last, at least with these guys, as Under Oath, because I was like, I'm gonna just put everything out there. Like, I don't know what's gonna happen. and. Normally with Under Oath, we get into a studio and it's like, fight everything out, like my way, and this guy wants it his way, and this guy wants it his way, and everyone's unhappy. But this time we, uh, you know, we worked together. Yeah. And it, you know, it only took us 13 years to figure it out, but we learned how to work together as a band, and uh, so it was you, a lot of fun. Would you say this album is a, is a story about, you know, the differences you guys have now and getting back together? I think it, the whole record kind of takes place from that last day on stage at Janus Landing where we where we played our last show all the way up until we finished recording it, you know. Um, our drummer went through a divorce and uh, I was a drug addict for a pretty long time and finally kicked all that. And, uh, and then there was like a lot of inner turmoil in the band and things that we had done just to hurt each other and just growing up and it's all on that record you know it's a it it's under oath becoming who we are I feel like it's kind of like starting over for the second time or the first time I don't know whatever you would call that but like we got a second chance which never happens and when you're making music the reason why people I feel like always gravitate to someone's like oh I love their old stuff their first record this that because when you when you're making your first record no one knows who you are you're not big you're not popular there's no pressure and when we were making this record no one knew we were making a record. We didn't announce we were making a record. We didn't, you know, we we had no no plans to the outside world. Like we just started making it. There was yeah. no timeline. There was no pressure. There was no expectation. And it had been so long since we put out a record. It had been eight years. It was kind of like we got in the studio and said, "Let's do what we want to do." So there's a lot of controversy going on about people deciding whether if you're a Christian band or if you're not a Christian band. Which one? Would you classify yourself? I don't think we're a Christian band at all. I think we've made that pretty clear. And that's not to go back against anything we said when we were growing up, or it's not bashing religion or Christianity in itself. We just felt like as six grown men going through life, it's really unfair to make us all have to believe the same thing in order to create music. Mm -hmm. Because that caused a lot of the problems in the breakup in the first place. When we were a Christian band and we were going through things, like I was hiding what I was doing, Aaron was hiding what he was doing, Tim was hiding what he was doing, we couldn't talk because it wasn't, you were going through something that wasn't allowed if you're in a Christian band, in a leader position, you know? Like, so it was, very, it was very hard to communicate. And I just felt like when we broke those walls down and it's like, let's just be a band, 
yeah. believe what you want to believe in. Like as long as we're doing good, like everyone in the band's doing way better than they ever have been. Like we're way healthier, way happier. There's like no more drugs. There's like people are like happy and healthy and have families and stuff. It's like really a healthy relationship. And before we kind of tore down those walls, it was very unhealthy. And a lot of misconception in the media becomes like, oh, they're blaming it on religion. They hate religion. They hate God. They hate that. And that's so not true. It's just like this just group of people doesn't work to have to be the same, like under the same right. beliefs. Diversity like, yeah. within the group. Yeah. Because they, you grew up in a Christian home. We all, we all did to some way more extreme than others. Like Tim was homeschooled, mm -hmm. you know, and I, you know, I went to church with my mom, like very loosely, you know, like you yeah. would, cause you were supposed to go to church. Like we, you know, we were taught the basics and, you know, we were, it was a pretty conservative family and we were like based our lives off that, but it wasn't like laying hands on each other and praying all the time and like right. speaking about Jesus all the time. Like some of the other guys were in way more, uh, I guess, more extreme as far as their beliefs go. So tell me a little bit about the, the song that you guys were nominated for. Yeah, the, the, we were nominated for a song called All My Teeth, which is really cool because we actually wrote that song in the studio. So when we were writing this record, me and Aaron did a lot of writing alone. I did some writing by myself that made the record. And then there's some songs that the four of us worked on together. Me, the four writers, myself, Aaron, Chris, and Tim. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was one of the songs that we were in the studio. We would work until a dinner. We'd break for dinner. Sometimes we'd come back and mess around and go somewhere. And sometimes it wouldn't go anywhere and start the next day. That was when we came back from dinner and just you know, it just started just going. Yeah. Like we had an idea of a song that we really liked. It was actually a Nine Inch Nails song that we would always talk about and we'd always quote cool this song. Um, and then it just spiraled into this idea. Chris had an electronic thing and Aaron started playing a drum beat. And then before we knew it, you know, I was coming up with vocals and the chorus melody. And, you know, it was, uh, it was all created in, in the studio, which was which is cool. Cause that was like the four of us, I think All My Teeth was the first song the four of us really got in there on this record, like old school style of Under Oath of like, and working together and not fighting through it like we used to, which was sick. Uh, and you said uh, in an interview last year that you wanted to be more true to your songs. You wanted to be more honest. Yeah. What's the most honest part about this song? I mean, to me, it's, it's always about I mean, I want to make a song that I want to hear, you know? And I think there was a point under oath where we were supposed to be, like you said, we were supposed to be Christian. We were supposed to be metal. We were supposed to be, it's like that we felt like we had to do these things for our fans. And this time we were just, it's not a disrespect to the fans, but I think it's, it's being true to yourself. It's like, I want to love it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'm going to go back to what I was doing after Under Oath broke up, which was working on my own music. You know, like, I don't want to be out here and be miserable again. I don't want to, I was, I felt like I was the last man standing last time, like before we broke up. I was like, I don't want to look over and see my, one of my best friends miserable, doing the thing that we love the most. Like we, we did this because this is what we wanted to do, you know? So making music that you don't want to listen to seems kind of counterproductive to that whole ideal. Is there a part in the song uh, that means a lot to you? Why did you write it? That it that song's more of an angry song, and people think it's a it, it <laughs> people think it's like us completely bashing religion. It, it's not. It's it's more us tearing down the ideals of what people expected us to be, and, and all the problems that came with that. that. That song is very very honest. Like like you said, uh, you know, it's the it's the first song I guess ever that people have heard us drop the f bomb, mm -hmm. and people think that I did that on purpose. Like oh he's trying to prove a point and I was like no it, it's not like I actually came out of the vocal booth when I made that take and asked everyone I was like how do you feel about that you know I'm not trying to stir any feather I don't want to make people upset but it was in the song I say I'm not your prey and I think when you're in that kind of heated of a moment you wouldn't say I'm not your prey man or like I'm not your freaking prey. you know like you it's like if you like if you hit stub your toe and you're like uh, you know, like it had you that. Real. It was real. Yeah. It was real in the take. I didn't write the lyric down. If that makes, if that helps anyone understand what, what, like, 
doing the take and the music and what I was saying and, and like we wrote that song like that day so the lyrics were very fresh so when I was it came out because honestly when I wrote the lyrics there wasn't wasn't enough syllables on that line so when I'm singing it and I'm emotional about it like that came out you know like because I didn't write it down so there was two syllables missing and that's what I was feeling like that's how I felt to say that to someone like you know like and and it was just natural so what's the next step for you guys you get, you get, you're nominated for a Grammy it's a big deal it's a big what deal what is the next step well, we leave for the Grammys on Saturday. Yay. Yeah, we're Take all going. Take me with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you want to come? I'll go, yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, it, which is wild because it's nothing you ever think about when you're writing music. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't you don't think about anything else. Like, you don't think about... I do think about things like how will a crowd feel, like, with the rhythm of this song, the beat. Like, is, is the tempo fast enough? Do people want to jump to it? Do people want to sing along to it? Is it... Is it making my hair stand on end. Because if my hair's not standing on end, someone else's probably won't, you know? But you don't think about like nominations and, you know, our first sold out arena. Like we just sold out the Sun at Walt Yingling Center now. Like, you know, 13 years ago we played at VFW Hall and then we just headlined, sold out the Sun Dome. You know, it's like, you don't think about those things when you're creating music and then we were on this last tour that ended December 14th, which ended here in Tampa. Uh, and we were in New York on the New York show, and we had a day off, so I was in a hotel. Uh, my girlfriend flew out, and she was like, what, dude, can you shut your phone off? Like, what is going on? Like, it was early, and we're in bed, and I, like, grab my phone. I'm like, 30 mi- text messages? I'm like, what is, I start checking, I'm seeing all these congratulations from, like, people I haven't talked to in the industry f- you know, like my old manager from my side project, all this stuff. Like, what? For what? What are they talking about? You know, and then I see like our current, you know, our manager who's been with Under Oath the whole time, Randy had said, like, you guys got, you know, we woke up to the nomination this morning. Wow. That's really. And cool. you find out when everyone else finds out. So, like, we found out when, like, <laughs> there's Car- no secret letter Cardi that B. comes in the no, middle. No, no. Cardi B finds out the same time Under Oath finds out, <laughs> as far as I've been told. Yeah. So, so we did, you know, there was not even a thought. It's not like, oh, you're considered for a Grammy or whatever it is. You just, we just woke up like, what? And that it's just a, a wild thought. And it's never been like a goal or anything, but it is very flattering. And to me, it's encouraging because, you know, Under Oath gets nominated. The Fever, who's our friends, who's like a aggressive kind of rap metal type of band and Bring Me the Horizon, who are our friends, uh, Trivium. There's like, it, it means that the Academy is paying attention to like, we're doing something, you know what I mean? Which is bands like us 10 years ago, we wouldn't get touched with a 10 foot pole, you know, like festivals that we were never allowed to play. We play now. And so you and think the times are changing. Times are changing. And, and I think, better. yeah. And people are, there's always been that misconception that rock and roll is dead. It's all about hip hop now. And hip hop has become pop and it's mainstream. It's like soccer moms are listening to Kanye West. And you're like, you're like, Oh, I agree. It is the biggest it's ever been, but, I don't think rock is completely gone because I'm seeing it grow in front of my face and I'm seeing things like Grammys nominating me and my peers, you know, like it's wild. It, it means stuff is happening. Like I don't think it's going unnoticed. And uh, What are those things called when, they're, when they're, they're people at the front of the stage and they're in a closed in area? Is it a mosh pit? The, oh, the mosh pit? Mosh pit? Oh, they're wild. Do you know how to do that? Uh, I would do never you know go down there. How to... Is I would never go down. Dance or an no. art to, there is to no the music art. You do? What I, what I see <laughs> down there looks terrifying. You you know what I think is crazy is the people that wait in line, and, and I've gone. I grew up going to shows. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a music fan, which is why I'm a mu- why, so why I'm a musician. Like, let's be honest, we do this because we love it. You know, like I grew up loving music like more than anything, and loving bands and like learning how to play their songs and going to shows and then starting to play my own shows. Uh, and I still don't understand the kid that waits in line that goes all the way to be in the front of the barricade and they're smushed behind 3,000 other people for the whole show and love every minute of it. I, I, without them, we would have nothing. So I applaud them. But I just don't understand. I'm like, dude, I would never. I'm the guy in the back, like, <laughs> listening and watching. I don't, On the balcony I don't, with the Diet Coke. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to be smashed in the front <laughs> of the barricade. There's no way. So I, I've never understood that. But, yeah, in, in the mosh pit, I've, that just that just... I mean, that's where people want to take out their aggression. And I, I, I think it's a great, healthy release. You know, it's like people like 
get, they're, get, get, they're getting emotional about it, but like, I would never go in there. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to get hit in the face. No way. It's crazy because we started playing like, this is our first record we've ever had radio. Like, mm -hmm. the radio picked up a song called Rapture, and then now they picked up another song called I Hate It, and it's climbing the charts, and they're potentially going to push another one on this record this summer. But we're, we're getting all this radio attention, so we're getting on these festivals with some of these older rock bands, which is, is funny because, like, to the fans, they've never seen anything like it, yeah. and we're seeing a crowd of, like, like older like mm -hmm. rock dudes, you know, that we've never played in front of. So there is still a lot of, like, this. You know, like the old guys. How do you do it? They, they do this, and they, they hold the beer in one hand. You know, and they're like, so yeah. What does this mean exactly? I don't know. You know, who knows? It's Ozzy Osbourne made it up, <laughs> he I think. Did. You're not biting bats, are you? No. Okay, no. good. <laughs> I love animals. <laughs> That's good. Too much. That's good Too news. Much. That's good news. Yeah. That, yeah, I don't. It's funny. We're playing a lot of those. Like I was saying, things that wouldn't touch on the 10 foot mm -hmm. pole years ago, even a few years ago. And we've been invited to do them around the around the world. So we play with Guns N' Roses in Spain, and you know, all sorts of weird stuff. Ozzy Osbourne, we play them a couple times. It's like, it's wild. Yeah. But you're seeing that those rock worlds collide. Like, it's not so segregated anymore. Like it used to be like punk rock and metal and hardcore, and then rock and classic rock. And you're kind of seeing it kind of all come together now, which I think is a beautiful thing. There shouldn't be so many yeah. walls. Oh. Just if you like it, like it. Who well, cares? Congratulations for your nomination. Thanks, man. Appreciate Best it. of luck to Thank you. And Thank you. Uh, Los Angeles. And uh, rock on. There we go. Yeah. <laughs>